Hey guys, I'm Richard Fitzgerald. This is Dubai Works, where we interview the business leaders making a difference in this great city. That business with scalability was very interesting to me. I like building something that has legacy. Good morning and welcome back to another episode of Dubai Works Business Podcast, episode number 96, coming up to 100. And as usual, we have a diverse range of guests with a different perspective of Dubai. Today, I have the pleasure of being joined by the nose, Paolo Terenzini. Uh, Terenzi, my Italian pronunciations will always need improvement. Um, he is from the luxury fragrance and lifestyle brand Tiziana Terenzi. Uh, and he joins us from the coastal province uh, Rimini in, in northwest Italy. Good morning, Paolo. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Goodbye. How are you doing? Very good. Thank you. So thank you for waking up early. I'm sure it's quite cold at that part of Italy at the moment. How are things there? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yes. It's absolutely, absolutely really cold and very early for my standard habits normally because uh, I woke up very early this morning for meeting you, but it's a great pleasure. Okay, amazing. Can you just uh, t tell us the area that you're from? Is that where you're from? Is that where the brand is based? Yes, absolutely. I, I was born here, by the way, with my sister, Tiziana. Uh, it's, it's a very small village, but very characteristic, uh, kind of Italian style, where life is very easy. We can ride bicycles, uh, reach uh, the shore where we have a beautiful sea. Not not as much beautiful as uh, Dubai, but it's, uh, it's nice, Adriatic Sea. We are not far away from Venice, so normally we used to sail and reach Venice during the summertime if you want to have a, a romantic uh, journey. And all around here also we have a beautiful hills with a wild landscape, with uh, historical castles. So it's also nice uh, if you, in, the, in the point the perspective of the of historical uh, journey to visit a very nice characteristic Middle Age uh, period. And it was very famous for few things, my, my area, because uh, Federico Fellini was born here, so famous uh, movie maker, and Dolce Vita was born in, in that area. Wow. We loved uh, this type of uh, lifestyle. Uh, <laughs> and uh, <clears throat> other side uh, that is very famous for, for our amazing food. So here you can test, uh, really, the Italian cuisine. So it's, uh, it's a, good, a good idea to, to have a journey here One whenever you want. Amazing. Mm. One to add to our bucket list when we can all travel freely again. Amazing. So the area is known for cuisine and Italian lifestyle and, and history. And uh, was it is it an area that uh, fashion designers and, and creativity has come from as well? And how, how, how did your yep. brand start out? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, we have uh, we have many fashion companies here. Uh, like uh, Alberta Ferretti, Moschino, uh, Gautier, and many others. So it, it's a very important uh, industrial uh, area where we can produce uh, fashion and beauty. Uh, and of course, this, this area is so important for our company because more or less uh, we produce for many other brands also, and we are very focused in quality for a special artistic perfumes like we have in Tiziana Terenzi, but also for other brands that I don't want to mention now because we have no disclosure agreement. But of course, is a it's important part of our job, and also this part of commitment give us the chance to be free to explore new border in the perfumery with Tiziana Terenzi. So we are not, we don't have the pressure to get a return on investment on this uh, and we can be more focused in the artistic project. And this is what I really like to do normally, uh, following my inspiration, not be correct. Uh, and I'm used to say I'm politically incorrect knows uh, because I really like uh, to merge a different type of uh, skills, attitude and art mm. to create something that it can be the liquid emotion. What we would like to deliver today is a uh, really not only a perfume or deodorant, but it's more something that you can drive with you, your personality, and project it to around your your environment. So surrounded by you, and have this type of spirit. Amazing liquid emotion. I really like it, uh, Paolo. <laughs> your your title of the nose uh, is that. So for people not familiar with the industry and naming conventions, is that similar to a creative director in a fashion house or, or what's your responsibilities in that respect? Oh, yeah. 
let's say that uh, it's a little bit different from uh, um, uh, a creator because uh, uh, this is a moment probably more the part of my sister and you know in my company in our company we share everything so it's very difficult to see where is the border between uh, my sister and i uh, the, the real problem that uh, we are two different type of characters and also this is our our strength because of we are looking for to find always uh, the synthesis between the two perspectives. So this is make uh, the products uh, in a different way and we put always the bar very high. In my, my part of the job is more to work with the molecules and uh, create uh, uh, in my lab uh, the different type of uh, essence. And after Tiziana is going to take care more about uh, the packaging, uh, the, um, the bottle, the design, that should be absolutely current with the perfume. Mm. So it's very difficult to see what is the difference from between one and the other, and we should merge uh, our our abilities uh, in in the same in the same direction. So we work together, and we are both uh, creator and nose, uh, and uh, it's really a family business, and we are the third generation. Oh wow! I was going to ask amazing family business. But did you just going back to what we were talking about the the region and creativity? Uh, do pe- are there courses in universities there or do people study in Bologna or how does it kind of where does the talent emerge from oh yeah <clears throat> first of all uh, I was born in a candle swimming in a spot of perfume uh, this is really the history because uh, my grandpa was a perfumer so we have this type of uh, opportunity to to grow up uh, around this and is in a family business uh, there is a very subtle border between your family affairs and uh, business part mm, mm. because uh, you you share every moment and you know italian family are quite uh, big uh, we used to stay together long long period uh, at lunch time all together more or less similar also our arabic uh, style yeah. to, to live together the family and in this uh, in this case uh, so all my experience passed through this type of uh, empiric moment to live uh, and for me uh, instead to write note on my on my backlog, I used to fix uh, the memory through the small impulse with the perfume, the evocative power of the perfume. You know, normally you smell something and immediately your mind uh, blow in a direction and you have immediately the memory of that moment, the person that you met. Uh, this was the same for me. After this, of course, uh, you need to study and you need to be quite familiar with uh, chemistry and you need to be familiar with uh, the, the mix of the molecule waiting. So there is a type of uh, training on course. Uh, it's not really a university of now they are starting to have this type of uh, cosmetology direction. Plus you can have uh, a kind of mentor, in this case was my my grandpa, uh, that they drive you to find. But after that is uh, you got some type of technique Mm. And then you start to explore your like in a musician. And from my my career that before that I was a musician, I'm using to to play with the notes like I played uh, with my guitar. Mm. Uh, you know, there is a very big similarity between music and perfumes. Really? So in this case, uh, you have notes, you have chords in music on the pentagram, and you have the same in the in the perfumes. No notes, chords. Uh, pyramids and so on and we try to play our lyric with the perfume Do you, uh, very interesting it's, it's fascinating to kind of speak to someone from this type of a business do, do you have well, a in the family business do you have a, a core scent do you have a main scent that's your kind of iconic um smell or do you have many different uh, versions yeah and, yeah 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 of course we have uh, we have a few things uh, that this is a uh, probably the main difference between uh, the French and the Italian school of perfumery. Uh, everybody knows that uh, <laughs> perfume was born in Italy. Although French people made a very good marketing, so they <laughs> they overtaken this part. But uh, in, before that, uh, the period of the Roman Empire, uh, perfume was born in the Mediterranean area uh, between Egypt and and Italy. And after that, uh, uh, in uh, during uh, the Renaissance, when uh, <clears throat> Uh, Catherine de Medici married uh, uh, the, the the king of France, moved to France with to the court with also the air perfumery, and ah. there they started this part. Uh, 
every each family in Italy has his own library. And in here in my in my home, uh, in my family, the big legacy that we received from our grandfather was this huge wide uh, library of olfactive uh, ingredients. Mm. And some of those are priceless. We have it was probably one of the biggest collection in Europe of food because it was a, a really wood lovers before mm. that wood became so popular mm. even on the western side of the world. And this part so, of yes, the world as well, yeah. Yes, so we have uh, our special, special uh, ingredients and we have also our special molecules that is a mix of different type of ingredients to create something. And we end once, now I'm going to confess, that we call the magical drop uh, is a kind of a terrency invention, and these uh, these products make uh, all the people addicted. Okay. We have in one of in a few of our fragrances, and all of those are bestseller worldwide. Okay, amazing. So <laughs> nice to hear the kind of hist- historical context as well around perfume. Uh, and uh, yes, is a is a very important perfume. I think uh, perfume is, is really a part of our history mm. because uh, when we start to use perfume, perfume is not only a kind of uh, tools uh, to smell good uh, is really uh, a status. So the perfume itself uh, mm. has a different type of uh, meanings. Also religion, you know, you have in, in many ceremonies, you use mm. a different type of perfume. And the perfumes itself, it came from Latin uh, parfumum, that mm. is mean through smoke, uh, mm. because it's really kind of uh, religion. And I think uh, in, if you look at uh, the Arabic culture of the Bakur that for me is uh, absolutely fascinating and I'm using uh, personally mm. at home uh, to burn uh, Bakur. Uh, it's really what you do through the smoke uh, of the Bakur. Mm. You're going to collect uh, for your textile uh, and fabric, uh, the, the, mm. the perfume and you, and you also create in the environment, uh, the spirit that uh, mm. pull up uh, your soul to another level. Yeah. So amazing. It, um, mm. Yeah, mm. actually, something came up during the inauguration speech last night about, and I was reminded of the scent that that we had in the, in the Catholic Church, um, and the different smoke and the different flavors and things like that. Incense, incense, yeah. yes, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah amazing, absolutely, amazing. So, but just talking about the family business side of things, was there temptation over the generations to kind of branch into other parts of fashion, such as? Um, different types of fashion design and things like that or does it take discipline to stay within the, the perfume area well yes the, you know it's um, first of all you need to know that uh, we are the third generation so we pass through different type of level because uh, yeah. our company was established in 1968 so we we have seen a different type of uh, tendons and and fashion and uh, and moments uh, of course perfume uh, is a little bit uh, far away from what is uh, only tendons, especially in the artistic perfumery, because uh, uh, commercial perfume or mastiche perfume, where you they follow immediately what is uh, like uh, in fashion. Every every season you have something new, the tendons of the color, the tendons of the shape. Perfume as well, they have this type of uh, tendons, but this is not very interesting for me uh, because I'm thinking that more perfume as an art one of the eight art it means uh, it's like a theater like a sculpture like a painting and you should tell something and i always used to say you don't have to smell the perfume you need to listen to the story behind the bottle mm. because when you have uh, the clear inspiration behind the bottle you can better understand all the ingredients and the complexity inside this is make uh, the difference so for for me the main challenge is to maintain uh, our freedom out of the pressure of the business part, because of course we are in business, <clears throat> and uh, maintain uh, the heading uh, to the direction that we would like to express. This is uh, what it is, is the meaning. Mm. So I'm thinking that we are more privileged uh, if we compare ourselves with the fashion area, because the fashion area are, in a way, intoxicated by the needs uh, to change uh, every every month uh, and this also nowadays if you look at around uh, what it happened with this pandemic is not any more sustainable uh, this type of uh, <laughs> rush to consume and and uh, immediately go through the basket bin whatever it was good 
only a few years ago, mm. uh, is not anymore possible. And I think that the perfume has more long-lasting life on that, on that direction. Okay, interesting. So you think the current, uh, the pandemic sort of changed the pace of, you know, releasing things seasonally and for fashion weeks and deadlines, and it, there's more appreciation for legacy and sort yeah. of uh, <clears throat> uh, things that are long lasting. Uh, yeah, I think so. I think so. Uh, also, I think that uh, we are becoming more cautious when we do something, when we buy something, we don't buy any something that is uh, only for one day life. Uh, we we try to buy maybe better uh, and with more value. Mm. And the value is not only in what you're buying, the perceived value of uh, gold uh, or diamond is also the value in the way these products uh, has been produced. So for us, it's, it's very important to be sustainable uh, 360 degrees. Uh, it means uh, we produce by solar power. We have uh, zero impact in our production. We don't destroy anything so when we produce. We try to recycle all all process uh, in order to have a really sustainable sustainable product. Now people became very sensitive on this uh, on this direction, and I think that uh, it's not possible to produce wonders to produce beauty if you're going to destroy something else. Mm. This is a kind of ethical contracts that uh, we cannot accept. A mm. uh, few years ago, this was not possible to, to tell. Yes, only a few pioneers are, are in this direction. But now this uh, mood became more and more wider uh, from countries that I didn't have better. We are, we are dealing more or less in 95 countries in the world and I've been traveling everywhere. Uh, and I've seen this kind of different that is changing dramatically day by day. Mm. So. Uh, this is a good a good hope for the future. I think that uh, this pandemic has a lot of uh, work things, but yeah. also some some good uh, talk that we receive. Exactly. There's a big demand for, even from the investor point of view of investing in sustainable, environmental friendly businesses, and um, that's good to know that that's part of the production process for your perfumes as well. Um, of yeah. those ninety five countries, when did sort of the Middle East become part of the story in terms of? Uh, exports and what's your presence like in this region and particularly in, in the UAE? Yeah, uh, you should know that uh, I am very different from any other brands because uh, normally the brands start uh, in uh, in Europe or in US. Uh, my career started in uh, in uh, Arabic country uh, in all GCC, so I did the contrary. And everybody at the beginning told me that uh, you are crazy and. Probably it's true. Uh, <laughs> I, I am, I am crazy, but I have a big affinity uh, with uh, Arabic people. Uh, it's really for me the main type of customers that I would like to please, uh, for few reasons, uh, and it's very simple. Uh, Arabic person are very educated to smell good, and they are very educated about ingredients. Mm. That is something that you don't find uh, now. They have started growing, but there is a very big gap between uh, Western people in Europe uh, or US uh, compared with Arabic because it's a kind of tradition in the religion, in the in the style of life. Uh, mm. uh, even a, a young a young child start to smell to use a perfume to go to pray and to, to have uh, his kind of social life. Here in Italy, for example, um, a, a gentleman or a lady start to wear a perfume when he's around 14, 15, and after he's going to grow. In China, um, maybe 22, 23 years old, they start to buy something that is similar to a perfume. Uh, in, your, in, in, in the region, in GCC, is uh, is completely different. So this is very important because at least you can challenge yourself and you make a presentation of your heart to people that are expert. So I should, uh, I decided to start uh, with, uh, with Dubai uh, and it was uh, my first, uh, my first visit, it was around the 2008, I think so, uh, before the big, uh, the big crisis. Uh, and after when I come back, I found that every every six months the, the city different and this kind of uh, incredible energy that is for me a, a kind of uh, great inspiration. So I I really like uh, to travel to to visit and to be there. Uh, and Dubai, we have our first boutique is open in Dubai, uh, so it's really uh, a place uh, to be in. I used to come quite frequently. Now okay. 
uh, with the limitation of travel is a little bit different, mm. but uh, I hope to come back soon. And uh, I love uh, to, to do that. From this point of view, when we start and we make a, a very solid base in, in the region from, uh, of course, Dubai and after Saudi and all the GCC, Kuwait and rest, uh, we built this type of uh, um, uh, idea of the perfumes and we create uh, to please uh, this type of customers. Mm. And then we expanded to Europe and the rest. And it was very funny because I think that the, the Arabic, Arabic touch in our perfume and also the type of customers that we please at the beginning create our success uh, uh, lately because uh, everybody would like to intercept uh, the wealthy Arabic customers that are traveling. And they're traveling a lot because they are good travelers. So mm. they go to London, the Arabs, uh, suffrages, uh, and the rest, mm. uh, and after the U.S. Uh, so they they helped me to to be successful so i'm very grateful for that and this is still my you know the first love you cannot forget <laughs> that's an amazing story it's amazing to hear it from that point of view and um did you, just talking about that of course we know from a from a luxury uh customer point of view there's a lot of demand for there's a lot of high net worth individuals in the region there's lots of luxury brands who have beautiful stores in dubai mall and across the region and in in, in yeah. Kuwait and etc. Um, but the Arabic touch is that from a is that how you incorporated from a product design or is it more so that that uh, there's more of a specific uh, sort of product for them? And c- can we can you talk a little bit about Sea Stars, the new nautical yeah. uh, in, inspired fra- fragrance collection that you've recently launched? Yes, thank you. Uh, it's, a, it's a very interesting uh, question. Uh, for me, Arabic touch is more in the mood of that. I don't, I, I don't make a perfume in the commercial perspective to please a, a specific type of uh, person. Uh, it's more the, the way to use the perfume. For example, Arab are very good in layering. So they are able to mix uh, different things. So ah. this is something that I'm going to learn. Uh, I've been traveling a lot before to start because uh, the tradition of wood, for example, the extraction, the way to mix uh, wood with mask, uh, the, the, the small uh, places, even in the souk where you can find uh, these beautiful oils, sometimes are without certification also, but you find something that is spectacular. Uh, this is what I, I took it. I try to be a thief uh, with my nose uh, to learn from this from this uh, from these people, uh, and of course I try to translate this uh, in my point of view with my spirit, uh, not to make a copy paste, but to mix uh, my culture with that. And if I look at uh, the history, there is many point uh, common point between Arabic and uh, Mediterranean people like I am. Mm. Uh, so I'm trying also to look at this period of the various when they deal with uh, with Arabic and the conflicts also, why not? Mm. Everything that they can create a contact. And this is what I try to bring. And I'm thinking that this was very innovative because uh, at the time when we started with the artistic perfumery, the, the main player uh, came from France. Mm. with this type of idea that I'm I'm not against. I'm I'm not a a lover, but I'm not against. Uh, And this type of uh, pure, perfect, uh, perfection, everything is very well balanced, for me is boring. Mm. I love tension. And this is what I I found it in in the Arabic uh, style. This is what I try to put in my my drop. And come back to your question, Sistar. Sistar is is a beautiful story. Uh, because uh, it's a gift that uh, my sister Tiziana did for me when I turned uh, 50. Uh, so now you also you know my age. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> okay, my, my reputation has already gone many years ago, so don't worry. <clears throat> uh, this uh, this idea this idea is uh, I am a, I'm a sailor. Uh, I love to sail, uh, and we are living on the shore. I told you before we have a beautiful harbor here, and my my sailing boat is Telea. One of the perfumes is called Telea. And all the collections uh, are related with the sea. The spirit of the sea is a moment when we, we have uh, a, a kind of uh, a new passage to another level of your life. When you reach 50, you get a kind of maturity and also 
you are changing your perspective in, in front of the life. And this is, you can feel it, this type of uh, new level of uh, living in this perfume. They are very different from the rest of the collection. Of course, we get another element. There is one single perfume, one single um, molecule that is a link, uh, like a fir rouge with all the fragrances that mm. is coming from the free, that is ambergris. You know, ambergris uh, is uh, the only ingredient that you can collect uh, uh, from the sea. Mm. Uh, and there is the spirit of the sailor man, the spirit of living on the sea. I always used to say that my homeland is the sea. And so my sister would like to make this uh, special, beautiful gift uh, uh, to celebrate my birthday. And we start with this sea star. But in the sea star, there is one bottle that I'm thinking that uh, this has overtaken herself in this uh, project is uh, deep in the water. Okay. So the, the Atlantide, this uh, beautiful bottle, is uh, is in the packaging, beautiful packaging. When you open, you have this uh, incredible, amazing effect with the LED. But the, the bottle is exactly uh, physically into the salty water, the sea water. Mm. So you need to, to dive your hand uh, to rescue the bottle that is completely covered by the water. So we need to also... Technical wise, making a big effort to find an hermetic pump uh, to protect uh, the product. There is no label in the in the bottle because, of course, if you're living for a while, the the water Same is a big solvent. So it's a uh, Atlantide, like uh, the famous uh, island, uh, that we need to rediscover these beautiful treasures uh, and wonders from the water. And there is uh, an incredible, famous. Uh, uh, absolute of tuberose in this perfume mm. that is priceless. So this is a really a piece of art with this beautiful sea star on the top of the cup, uh, gold plated. Uh, that is uh, okay, a jewel. I think that is that's it. Yeah, amazing. So, uh, so that's an amazing story. And of course, we have Atlantis the palm here as well, so which ties into that narrative quite well. You've got Atlantide, uh, Talia. You mentioned there's other scents, uh, Cubia. Ortha, or is Kubia, that, yeah. Kubia, that is a sea. Kubia, you know, uh, all the all the old boat from the Roman Empire, they used to have uh, two beautiful eyes in front of the of the boat uh, on the head. Uh, these beautiful eyes are as a kind of uh, apotropaic symbol to protect uh, against uh, the tempest, against the bad luck. Uh, and we are Italian, you know, very <laughs> very superstitious. superstitious. Uh, and this is what we like to do. And Kubia is also the symbol of the flag of my own town. Ah. So it's really, everything is related with the territory, with the landscape, with the place where we burn. And Orza and uh, and uh, Poggia are two specific uh, uh, orders that you used to give when you are sailing. Okay. And Orza is, means uh, go to upwind, uh, and uh, Poggia is downwind. So Orza, you feel the effort and when you, because you are fight against the wind to, to go up. Uh, and this is uh, the really, you can feel the spirit of these efforts and this uh, challenge with yourself in the perfume mm. and this floating, but all of them, they are delivering joy mm. because it's the joy of sailing, the joy of your passion, the joy of summertime. Mm. And the other one, uh, Poggia is a, uh, uh, essence of the speed because when you're when you're going to downwind usually you have uh, an acceleration on your boat because the mm. wind pull uh, your sail uh, from back so you have this kind of acceleration that is you can feel it and when you when you take the perfumes and you start uh, to to smell it you have immediately the feel of this acceleration of this uh, magical speed and um, okay i'm quite proud of these perfumes because <laughs> i like it all of this that's amazing. Yeah. I want to move on to two specific industry questions, but just focusing on, on Sea Stars for another second. When people here uh, want to purchase it, you mentioned that you will have a, a store. Do you know what location that will be in? And do you do online orders direct or do you have distributors as well? Okay, we have uh, our major uh, distributor that is based in Dubai is our, our important uh, partner because... Uh, we build together this type of journey. So mm. they, they were the people that discovered me, frankly speaking. So it's a special barrier. 
uh, and is my master distributor that he take care about all the region because you know regions are, is very complicated and you need someone that is going to control to maintain the level uh, of our products and the, in the right position also with the price level so yes we are in a different point of sale we have our our own boutique uh, in dubai mall uh, in the perfume co Mm. We have a, a special nice location in Atlantide. You mentioned before Atlantide. There is a very nice boutique there with a, one of the, our greatest partners. And we have a place here. Uh, they did also a very nice uh, shooting inside the aquarium in Atlantide. Atlantis, with, the, yeah. with our perfume and with, the, cool. with, the, with the scuba. <laughs> and it was very, I was impressed when I see it. Okay. Really, the, the aquarium is impressive. So, yeah. by the way, it's, everything is impressive in, in there. And plus, we have uh, many other other doors. I don't, I don't want to mention any anybody, but uh, we have a lot of these uh, uh, in all the region. Dubai, of course, is is very important for us. And uh, online, we all only accept to have online stores that are official dealer, because uh, unfortunately, when you start to be popular or your or your perfume start to be quite famous. You start to also fight against uh, fake, uh, yeah. and there is uh, always some kind of crooks uh, that uh, <laughs> try to get uh, advantage as a parasite yeah. uh, with your with your uh, creativity. So we always suggest uh, to all our customers that would like to please and enjoy the beautiful journey with one of the perfumes of Tiziana Terenzi to stay closer to one of our official dealer, and they can find easily uh, on our website uh, mm. where they are located. Or in the in the distributor website, uh, they are mm. in in the area. So we don't exp- we don't send from our website uh, our e-shop to the region because it's complicated for delivery and whatever. And we prefer to develop locally with mm. each boutique or department store um, our our collection. Interesting. Great to know, uh, Paolo. To, one question specifically around the industry, and then I, I want to talk about ha, uh, how a consumer can approach perfume and your advice. Uh, but firstly, wh- from what I understand and what I've read, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, a lot of fashion labels see perfume as uh, high margin compared with their other items, but also a way to be more accessible. For example, if you're a, a luxury item, you're you know if you're a, a tailor-made suit or if you're a handbag, it might be very ex- expensive for many customers to purchase. However, the bottle and the fragrance uh, is a lot more accessible uh, for for fans of the brand per se, yeah. um, and they can buy yeah. it uh, more often. Um, is that why you see uh, over the last sort of a decade or two decades, many uh, well-known brands having many more fragrances and releasing them quickly, like we discussed earlier. And also, I know you mentioned NDA, but is that where is that how you help these brands who maybe might come from a tailoring background who don't have the experience on on perfume, and that you can help them create something in their own under their brand, but it's actually your creation. Yeah. Yeah, yes, of course. So we have a very important collaboration with some of these uh, famous brands that would like to enter in this direction. It's not only because the perfume is more uh, easy to sell, let's say you're accessible for price point of view compared to uh, clothes or jacket or whatever dress, um, but also because uh, when you wear a perfume, is for me kind of invisible tattoo to be part of something, you know, like mm. you know the tattoo idea to 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 write on your on your body yeah. the story of of you are, you know, like uh, the the Siberian code. Uh, here we have the same idea that the perfume can be a kind of uh, card to be part of a club or to be part of a, a kind of community that is a brand that can represent as well. So they try to do that. Sometimes uh, they make a mistake and miss, many of those uh, are coming back. Uh, they give the brand in licensing to someone that is going to make a perfume. So they are going to be very greedy, aggressive uh, in order to collect them a lot of return and money wise. Mm but they don't pay attention to the DNA of the brand. So the brand now, they started to come to specialists like I am to say, okay, we want to do something that should be current with the the DNA of the brand, with the project of the brand, with the vision of the brand. And this is uh, what we 
try to help and to do. So this is became uh, in the last 10 years, as you say, more and more popular and important, not only for the um, <clears throat> easy way to sell, but also to create a more connection, intimate connection with your customers. Mm. And this is uh, what we would like to to do, by the way, because it's a, it's a really interesting part uh, and you have the possibility to explore different parts of, of the business. Because, of course, when you have a contact with this one big uh, brand, mm. you are going to enter uh, in, a, in a very important library of the history, especially with some of those that are more than 300 years. Wow. So that's, it's very nice. That's really interesting to think of it like that. I never thought of it like that as a kind of a membership or a, a way to be more part of the community of the brand. It makes me think yeah. maybe maybe these other iconic brands like Apple will come out with a perfume one day. <laughs> you never know. Why, why not? Why, why not? Why not? Yeah. Why not? Um, why not? Amazing, Balo. And so just from, you know, those fragrances you mentioned, uh, the target audience and say, say um, you know, age group, male, female, uh, teenagers, uh, you know, o- older people or, or something and and someone like me, how would I approach this? And what would your advice be for uh, from your brand, but also, uh, you know, um, so someone in my demographic might obviously be targeted with lots of marketing and in malls and in, in airports with these household names. And we might yeah. we might think it's nice smell and we might uh, buy the perfume and then stick with it for a long time and keep replacing the bottle. Um, what would your advice be to kind of, um, you know, if we're not real connoisseurs to kind of experiment a little bit more and how could we approach that? Yeah, uh, I have a, I always say used to, to give this type of uh, advice. Take your time when you make a, a choice of a perfume because a perfume is a very intimate way to deliver who you are. Mm. Uh, so I, I've seen people, uh, I had a very, a lot of uh, personal appearance uh, or events uh, and people that are buying perfume, they someone spray the perfume, the beauty advisor, they give them yet the smell. Ah, oh, yes, I can, I take it. <laughs> uh, this is for me is is not the proper way to to buy a perfume because a perfume has a different type of moment uh, in his uh, explosion projection, and you should evaluate all this moment because it's not similar from the first moment up to the end of the day. The perfume dry down so. Take your time. First of all, listen to the story of the perfume. What is the inspiration behind? If there is no story, there is, it means that it's only deodorant. You can buy easily for $5 a very nice body spray that is uh, more or less do the same job. Mm. But if you want to have something that is going to intrigue yourself and also give a, a extra power to your soul mm. and what you do, because projection is exactly what we do. We, we, there is a very nice song in Italy that we can we can recognize uh, love by smell, and this is absolutely true because this is what is a, one of the our primitive uh, sense, and is a, is a very important from our our. We don't we are not cautious of, of this, but it's very important. Mm. So the the first uh, tricky is uh, smell. Try to put uh, if you like it the what you smell on the moyette put on your skin. Leave it uh, dry down for a few minutes or, or even more if you have time, and leave your nose take the decision. Don't be oppressed uh, or forced by any kind of advertising because advertising is made uh, to take your decision. Mm. So be free and, and uh, leave your nose to make a decision. So this is uh, the only trick that I can give you because there is extre- extraordinary perfume that they can sweet you, but they cannot sweet me. Because my pH, uh, my personality is different. So mm. you need to find something that is going to surround you perfectly. And there is, for sure, there is one uh, in any brands that you can find it that is do that. So take your time, smell it. And if you like it after a few minutes, like at the beginning, it means that it's yours. Because, you know, many perfumes have this type of uh, very uh, tricky top notes. Uh, they hook you. You buy, but you go home. <laughs> Many persons say me uh, the your, the dry down is not necessarily what what you would expected, yeah. and after you are not happy. Amazing. So take your time, and for the targeting of the person, uh, we produce only unisex perfume because I don't believe in gender. For me, perfume wow. is a, a driver of emotion, as I say before, uh, and uh, there is no gender in emotion. So I. 
truly believe that all the perfumes are unisex. Uh, our perfume are all unisex, uh, but in the target uh, of the customers, if I can say that uh, probably 65% uh, are uh, female, uh, the rest are, are male, uh, the target is uh, always is uh, between uh, the most important part uh, uh, of our, our customers are between 25 and 35 years old. And uh, we have a very nice uh, sector between uh, 35 up to 55. Mm and we are going to decrease. But it's, it's very simple. Uh, the young generation are more free and open-minded to find and explore new new type of brands. Mm. They are not uh, in the mainstream brand. Uh, people aged like me, they are more strict uh, to what they knew, so Cologne, something that is uh, aftershave or uh, mainstream brands uh, like your Chanel or others. So they are little be reluctant to move from this kind of safe zone to another area especially when they have to pay a fortune for a person interesting uh well you've opened up my eyes a lot paolo i'm afraid that's all i have time for this morning uh but i want to i i can't wait to kind of go and taste and <laughs> smell the perfume in dubai mall next time i'm passing thank you. and i'll recognize the brand so thank you so much for sharing the story really nice to hear and I'm glad you're able to join us uh, from Italy this morning. Thank you very much. Uh, have a wonderful weekend for you. For us, it's not uh, yet not arrived, yet. but uh, <laughs> enjoy enjoy the time and I hope to see you physically in my next trip in Dubai. Brilliant. More, welcome and hopefully you'll be back here soon. Ciao. Thank you very much, Paolo. Ciao, ciao. Thank you very much. Bye. Thank you. Hey guys, I'm Richard Fitzgerald. This is Dubai Works, where we interview the business leaders making a difference in this great city. That business with scalability was very interesting to me. I like building something that has legacy.